What is going on, everybody? Paul here with you, as usual, with some coffee, some crypto, some news, some events. So you know this has got to be a crypto coffee update, so we're kicking it off right with our simultaneous sip. Join me now. Ah, best part of waking up is not doing copyright infringement. I think I made that joke before. However, you know, what can I say? Sometimes history repeats, as we'll see in today's episode. But of course, we have some new exciting stuff for you. We have a very special episode, since we're having a giveaway contest. That's right. Cryptide is going to be giving away some crypto, which is excellent you guys have your chance to enter and win make sure to watch the whole video though because we're going to be dropping some details throughout so let's have our first segment of the day the news mount gox is collecting creditors lost funds claim so it looks like the 2014 uh, collapse of the largest cryptocurrency exchange at the time is finally starting to have some cathartic conclusion let's go ahead and expand and see what's going on there the Japanese crypto exchange Mt. Gox is collecting civil rehabilitation claims, and essentially everyone has until October 22nd to submit said claims. After that, individuals will be forfeiting their chance to claim, so if you've had any involvement or lost coins with Mt. Gox, now is your chance to get in contact with this mediator. You can see here again that if you don't meet the deadline, you'll be subject to disenfranchisement or a loss of right to the claim. This is due to the fact that there are less Bitcoins available than were actually lost, so they want to make sure that everybody who is the most interested and basically paying attention to the situation is able to get recompense as they so deserve. And Mt. Gox has had a controversial history to say the least. As said, uh, there were more Bitcoins taken than are currently available. While there were 850,000, approximately 473 million US dollars at the time. So imagine what that's worth today. I'll leave that up to you to find out. There are only 200,000 Bitcoin available now that will be distributed to individuals who go through the claim process. So with that said, it's great to see some cathartic ending to this long running saga. Let's go ahead and move into another very interesting article that demonstrates how history is not only being made, but is being heavily influenced as time goes on right underneath our feet. So the sands are shifting as we see half a billion tether tokens infused in August, yet no signs of a market pump, which is interesting. For those who don't know, the tether is a stable coin. It's essentially pegged to one US dollar, but how this is undertaken is what merits so much scrutiny. Now, 500 million USD tokens have been created in August alone, however we have not seen a subsequent price jump. Strangely enough, all of these tokens were sent to Bitfinex. Now the problems first arose with Tether when they were originally subpoenaed by the CFTC to explain exactly why there seemed to be a correlation with Bitcoin price and Tether issuance and why Freedmin LLP, the auditing firm that had a long existing relationship with Tether, suddenly split with no comment. The issue further escalated as a formal report from uh, University of Texas came out saying that indeed there is some demonstrable correlation between the issuing of Tether and the Bitcoin price, so there was a statistical backing to the initial claim. Now Tether refutes all of this saying Bitfinex nor Tether is or has ever engaged in any sort of market or price manipulation. Tether issuances cannot be used to prop up the price of Bitcoin or any other token on Bitfinex. Which is strange, since the individuals who are behind both Bitfinex and Tether have been attempting to distance the two entities for as long as can be remembered. Revealed by the Paradise Papers, it's been shown that their previous claims are, frankly, either lies or misinformation in order to mislead investors, as Bitfinex and Tether were created, if not around the same time, directly one after the other with a very short amount of time in between. This further elicits thoughts as to how Brock Pierce and RealCoin may be involved, considering RealCoin was rebranded as Tether. In order to circumvent some of these issues, Tether subsequently asked Frey, Sporkin, and Sullivan LLP FFS, to perform an independent and fair audit into the company's bank accounts. A quote from FFS, FFS is confident that Tether's unencumbered assets exceed the balance or of fully backed USD Tethers in circulation as of June 1st, 2018. This is critical, considering the article calls this an independent and fair audit, and the quote itself mentions June 1st, 2018, this is something I wanted to draw attention to. This is what I mean by history being changed right under our noses. This was no audit whatsoever. In fact, this company simply looked at the June 1st books for Tether and ensured that they had more US dollars in their bank account than they had Tether in circulation. Considering that the Paradise Papers revealed a very opaque nature of relationships and potentially funding, one has to wonder what good a single day that the company knew in advance would be viewed uh, is in terms of being able to discern 
ongoing finances. Furthermore, strangely enough, Judge Eugene R. Sullivan, one of the individuals who the company is named after, is a member of the advisory board for one of Tether's banks. It was through this connection that Tether was introduced to FSS in the first place. As well, the firm's relationship with the bank allowed for the following review to commence in a timely and comprehensive manner, ensuring that no pertinent information was overlooked in the process. So, whether this is a matter of convenience or a conflict of interest is up for the user to decide, but nonetheless, the notion that it is indeed an audit it is farcical at its core and raises more interesting questions than perhaps provides answers. Next up, we have the SEC making a U-turn on the ETF rejection, a balancing act for adoption? Question mark. This is a great article uh, by Gareth Jenkinson. First article I've seen by him as far as I remember, I may be incorrect there, but I was very impressed by the length of this article, the quotes that were used, and the overall well-balanced tone and temperament that Gareth took with his article. So cheers to him there. I just cherry-picked two quotes from the article that he provided that I thought were the most applicable, but I do recommend going to check that out since it's chocked full of professional information and quotes from the field. This is from Imin Gun Serer. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Basically, he says the reasoning by the SEC is absolutely fair and goes on to say that the issues that are cited are with the ecosystem and not the technology itself, which is essentially echoing the claim from the last Crypto Coffee update that even though the SEC is reviewing these ETF denials, it does not mean that they have a more positive nor negative sentiment given they're trying to maintain as much objective neutrality as possible in the review process. They simply need more time to check out what's going on. In another quote, Quote from Gun Serer, the crypto community keeps hoping for a miracle where the SEC suddenly has a lapse in judgment and reverses decades of its own practice and keeps getting disappointed as a result. The SEC is patiently citing a small number of issues, all related to the maleficence or misbehavior at the exchanges. The crypto community has to learn to demand better and evolve the ecosystem towards a higher standard. That's all we have for the news. Let's go ahead and talk about this giveaway. I know you guys have been excited about that as we were talking about all of these excellent subjects and news for the day, but let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to be doing a crypto giveaway for Viewly. That's right, one of our favorite crypto platforms out there and by far our favorite video platform. Viewly has been fantastic by offering the wider crypto community access to a platform free of censorship that's innovative, listening to the actual content creators, and empowering users to patronize their content creators and support them in a way that's previously been marred by huge fees via Patreon or other barriers to entry. Viewly seeks to change that and really it's been an excellent journey so far. So, in order to help with distribution, one of the most important parts of any cryptocurrency project, getting tokens in the hands of the people, we're giving some away for free. That's right, free. All you have to do is comment your Ethereum address on this Crypto Coffee Update video on the Viewly platform. If you don't have an Ethereum wallet, don't worry. I actually created a how to use and upload to the Viewly platform video just a few days ago. So I'll put that below in the description and you can go ahead and get started in under 10 minutes with your new Viewly wallet. After that's done, drop a comment below and you'll be entered for your chance to win 100 view tokens. And there's more than one winner. After that, you can use those tokens to either upload your own videos onto the Viewly platform or use that token weight to vote for your favorite content creator and let them know, hey, we like your content, we like what you're doing, and we want to see more of it. It won't cost you any of your view tokens and it'll show support for your favorite content. So best of luck to everybody. Drop that Ethereum address below in the comments on the Viewly platform. Remember, if you comment on YouTube, it doesn't count. Head over to Viewly, links below. If you have any questions at all about these rules, feel free to ask below in the comments. I'll do my best to clarify, but really, it's as straightforward as I can make it. Drop that Ethereum address in the comments. Let's go ahead and move on to the happenings, conferences, and events in the crypto world for August 27th, Monday. Really couldn't find much going on today. We do have a fork, some launches, and some meetups going on, but no major coins, really smaller projects. So check the B list below in the description. These are all good projects, but I don't like to play favorites. And after all, a little bit of doing your own research is a good thing. Check behind me, check those sources. You never know what you may find with your favorite project that you may have missed. However, there are some things happening for August 28th, Tuesday. We have the Blockchain Summit Singapore happening in, of course, Singapore. And Substratum is announcing an exciting new project that they're alluding to. So far, some interesting things have come out of that project, so we've been keeping an eye on them, which you may like to as well. It's up to y'all. But with that said, that is all of the news, conferences, events, and information about the exciting Viewly giveaway. Let me know what you think of this kind of stuff below in the description. You want to see more giveaways? You want to hear about new, exciting, innovative projects and get your hands on some of those sweet crypto? 
well, let us know. After all, sharing is caring, and this would just be an empty channel without you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Your support really does mean the world. If it's your first time listening with us, welcome. Feel free to join the Discord. There's always exciting, active conversation going on there. But for now, my name is Paul. Best of luck in that giveaway, everybody. We are Cryptide, and remember, the tide is rising, which may be due to water displacement, thanks to all those coins.